everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today it won't be a music review but a very special video that I wanted to make for quite some time now. Actually I've been working on it ever since I started this channel but I always found things to improve and also it's a very important and personal video to me. Basically the idea here is to allow you to get cozy with Japanese pop music aka J-pop. Please bear in mind that I'm simply putting my own thoughts with information that I gathered mostly through my own experience, which means that I might miss a few things, not talk about some singers and artists, but you are more than welcome to share your own thoughts, favorite songs and singers in the comment section down below. Finally, before we get started, last warning, this video is not about preaching Japanese music or imposing it. All I want to do here is convey my own experience and simply allow others to get into J-pop, or at least have a small idea as to where to start. In no way is this video telling you what to do, you are free to take some advice and infos from it. It, but the rest is all up to you. Now let's get started. I have divided this video in five major points. If you want to skip one, you can check links for each part in the description down below. Point number one, be curious. It's simple as that really. When I first started listening to J-pop, I was 14 years old, back in 2006, and I knew nothing about it. Even worse, I barely knew anything about Japan, and definitely nothing about the music there. It all happened one day when I watched an episode from an anime on TV and heard the ending which had a Japanese song. This moment completely blew my mind. This is when I decided to do some research and discover more about J-pop. And boy, it was a struggle because back then internet was not as rich as it is now. Uh, you didn't get much info as you do now and finding only a single song from a Japanese singer was quite a victory when you did. Basically my point is simple, internet is your best friend. Write some singer's name down, then just research the hell of them. That's how I started, little by little, to find singers that would fit my tastes, and it only increased along the years. The other advantage today is that J-pop music is accessible a lot more legally speaking. You can find some singers on the iTunes store, even on Amazon sometimes, and in your, mo in your own country most of the time. Sometimes even Amazon has a um, digital format, but it's a lot a lot more rare. It's most of the time CD, but you know, there's still that chance. I would rather recommend Amazon to buy physical copies instead, as with a little bit of research you can find some CDs that were used, but still in great quality and for a very cheap price. Personally, I mostly buy my CDs from CD Japan now, but you have to keep in mind that they can be a bit pricey, which is why I usually like to get CDs from singers that I'm really a fan of, otherwise I like to wait a couple of months and buy it on Amazon for much cheaper. Point number two, don't be scared of the language. I will always remember the moment I heard Japanese for the first time. It made me laugh. It was so strange and the sounds and words were so unknown to me. It only made me even more curious. I had to listen to it more. It was almost hypnotizing. What I'm trying to say here is that you will find Japanese weird at first, especially if you've never heard of it. But trust me, after listening to songs more and more, it will become almost natural to you. And that's the beauty of music, you don't have to speak the language to appreciate a song, no matter what country you come from. And fear not, most J-pop songs use a little bit of English here and there, so it's not 100%, but you always find a way to get there through baby steps and thanks to English. Point number three, your music taste will be easy to find. What's great about Japanese pop music is that it can be very similar to what pop music is in general in your own country. So it's not hard to find that. What you like usually transpires even in Japan, and this goes also for many different music genres. But at the same time, J-pop also has its own identity, and you will notice it the more you listen to it. Don't be shy and try to listen to songs from the 80s, 90s, and 2000s. You will notice some similarities as well as differences. Point number four, J-pop changed my life. I cannot emphasize enough on how much J-pop music changed everything for me. It defines who I am today and especially since I happened to listen to it when I was a teenager, a phase of everyone's life where it's all about finding a true identity, discover yourself, question 
your surrounding, it really came in handy as to how I perceived myself and helped along the years to refine my taste in music. I evolved with j p o p being part of my life and many Japanese singers and bands helping me to get to a place I wouldn't be without them now. But if you get curious about j p o p in your 20s or even later, I think it's just as good. After all, discovery is part of life, so there's really no age limits. You just have to follow your feelings and curiosity and try new things. And what's great about music is that it can only be positive for you and sing something new. Just go for it. Point number five some recommendations. If I wanted to give all the recommendations I wanted, this video would be four hours long. Instead, I've decided to select one song from all of my favorite singers to give a small example of what J pop really is. Again, it's based on my own taste, so if you guys have different opinions, you can give me some artist names and song titles in the comment section down below. You can also find the links to the songs I recommend in the description down below. So, here we go. The first song that I recommend is by one of my favorite. Favorite singer, and it's Nami e Amuro with the song Wild. One of my all time favorite songs of hers that came out back in 2009, and it's still my jam up to this day. The second song is by Mika Nakashima, and it's called Orion, and it's one of my favorite ballads of hers. It's sad and melancholic, and really hits you, and I always get very emotional listening to it. Third song is by another singer that I really love, and that's The Bird Without Wings by Superfly. Sure, she's not entirely J pop, she's actually a J rock singer, but she has some. Songs that kind of go the J pop way, and The Bird Without Wings is a thoughtful and very emotional song. Fourth song is again one of my favorites from this singer, and it's Beautiful World by Utada Ikaru. Another gorgeous song from a singer that I really admire. I always felt like she has her own world when it comes to her music, and this song really defines everything I love about her music, whether it's how vibrant it is or how the composition is simply remarkable. Last but not least, here's my final recommendation, and it's a song that came out two years ago called Weblash by Japanese electronic duo Femme. Definitely worth checking out if you like EDM songs, it's addictive. And awesome. Thank you so much for watching this video. I know it's quite a challenge to talk about J pop because we all have a different experience with it, but I hope I managed to shed some light on it and maybe made some of you try it. Either way, I would love to know what you guys think of J pop and maybe open dialogue about it in the comment section. Thanks for watching again, and as for me, I'll see you next time. <laughs>